Have you ever stopped to wonder if the very thing you believe protects your identity might be what's holding you back from true happiness? Yes, we're talking about your ego. It's that voice in your head that insists on being the center of attention, that pushes you to prove your worth, to win at all costs. It's the part of you that insists on being right, even when you're wrong. It's the part of you that holds grudges, that resists change, that fears being vulnerable. And while it may seem like your ego is your friend, protecting you from harm and discomfort, it can also be your worst enemy. It can lead you down paths of conflict, regret, and unhappiness. It can blind you to your own faults and prevent you from growing and evolving. But what if we could understand it better and manage its influence on our lives? Consider the last time you refused to apologize, even when you knew you were wrong or when you didn't pursue an opportunity for fear of failure. These instances are more common than we'd like to admit, and they often stem from a common source, our ego. Our ego is like an invisible puppeteer, pulling the strings behind our actions, reactions, and choices. It's that voice inside our head that whispers, you're better than this, you don't need to apologize, or you might fail, so why even try? It's the driving force behind our need to always be right, to win at all costs, and to never appear weak or vulnerable. This egotistical mindset can lead us down a path of dissatisfaction and regret. For instance, think about a heated argument where you knew you were wrong, but your ego wouldn't let you admit it. The disagreement escalated, harsh words were said, and in the end, a relationship was strained or even broken. But for what? To protect your ego? Or recall a time when you were presented with an exciting opportunity, perhaps a job offer or a new venture. But instead of embracing it, you let your ego fill your mind with doubts. What if I fail? What if I'm not good enough? You asked yourself. Eventually, you let the opportunity pass you by, not because it wasn't good enough, but because your ego feared the possibility of failure. In both scenarios, your ego was in the driver's seat, steering you away from growth, understanding, and potential happiness. It's like a protective shield, but instead of protecting you from harm, it's keeping you from reaching your full potential. Your ego can also lead to conflict. When your ego feels threatened, it reacts by putting you on the defensive. It can make you overly critical of others, quick to judge, and slow to understand. This can create tension and misunderstanding in your relationships, causing unnecessary stress and negativity. Another fallout of an ego-driven life is dissatisfaction. Your ego is never satisfied. It always wants more, more success, more recognition, more validation. But no matter how much you achieve, it's never enough for your ego. This constant chase for more can leave you feeling empty and unfulfilled. But perhaps the most damaging aspect of an ego-driven life is the fear it instills in you. Your ego fears vulnerability, failure, and the unknown. It convinces you to stay in your comfort zone, to avoid risks, and to settle for less than what you deserve. This fear can hold you back from pursuing your dreams, from expressing your true feelings, and from living a life that truly makes you happy. These are moments when our ego overshadows our potential for growth and happiness. It's rooted in insecurity and fear, driving us to make choices that aren't in our best interests. But remember, recognizing this is the first step towards breaking free from the ego's hold. So are you ready to take that step? Let's delve deeper into the ego's world. Imagine a fortress built brick by brick from our experiences, societal expectations, and personal insecurities. This fortress is our ego, created as a barrier to protect our inner self from the world's harsh realities and judgments. But have you ever stopped to consider what we're truly safeguarding ourselves from? Our ego, while appearing as a bastion of strength, is actually rooted in fear. It's a fear of vulnerability, of appearing small or insignificant. This fear stems from our past experiences and societal pressures, which shape our perceptions of who we should be and how we should act. Our ego absorbs these expectations, creating a formidable fortress that shields our true selves. But here's the catch. Our ego's need for validation can make us prisoners within our own fortress. We find ourselves constantly seeking approval, measuring our worth by external standards and societal accolades. This can lead to a life lived on someone else's terms, not our own. Moreover, our ego's fear of vulnerability often results in isolation. It convinces us that revealing our true selves with all our flaws and insecurities will lead to rejection. So we put up walls, shutting out the possibility of genuine connections and personal growth. 
we become so consumed with maintaining the fortress that we lose sight of what's truly important. The essence of who we are, our authentic selves. In essence, our ego, which we believe is our protector, often turns out to be our captor. It can limit our potential, stifle our growth, and prevent us from forming meaningful relationships. The ego, in its quest to shield us from perceived harm, can isolate us, leaving us feeling disconnected and unfulfilled. Our ego tries to protect us, but often ends up isolating us, putting up walls that prevent genuine connections and personal growth. Understanding this is the first step towards dismantling the fortress, brick by brick, and emerging as our true, authentic selves, unencumbered by the weight of societal expectations and personal insecurities. The turning point comes when we recognize that our ego's foundation is not strength but fear. The fear of being judged, of not being enough, of being seen as less than perfect. It's this fear that feeds our ego, that drives us to act in ways we might not be proud of. Consider this, the ego is like a mask, a shield we put up to protect ourselves from perceived threats. But ironically, the very shield we use to protect ourselves often becomes our prison. We become so caught up in maintaining this facade of perfection, of strength, of invincibility, that we lose touch with our true selves, our vulnerabilities, our aspirations, our potential. But here's the good news. Recognizing this fear is the first step towards liberation. It's the moment when we start to see our ego for what it truly is, not a protective guardian, but a cage. And like any cage, it can be unlocked, it can be opened, we can break free. So how do we do this? It begins with self-awareness. By becoming more aware of our thoughts, our actions, our reactions, we start to see the patterns. We start to understand when our ego is stepping in, when it's trying to take control. And with this awareness, we gain the power to choose a different response, to choose growth over fear, authenticity over pretense. Recognizing the fear underlying our ego is not about blaming ourselves or feeling guilty. It's about understanding. It's about compassion. Compassion for ourselves, for the journey we're on. We all have an ego and we all struggle with it. But by understanding its true nature, we can start to navigate our lives with more clarity, more purpose, more authenticity. And it's in this space, this space of authenticity, of vulnerability, of truth, that we find happiness. Not a fleeting, surface-level happiness, but a deep, fulfilling sense of joy and peace. Because when we're true to ourselves, when we're not controlled by our ego, we're free to live, to love, to grow. This fear of being seen as imperfect or vulnerable is what drives our ego to take control. Understanding this is the first step towards liberation from its grasp. Managing our ego doesn't mean diminishing our self-worth. It means elevating our understanding of ourselves beyond mere appearances or achievements. Overcoming the ego begins with self-awareness. Recognize the moments when your ego is at play. Is it during conflicts when the need to be right overshadows understanding? Or perhaps when fear of failure stops you from exploring new opportunities? Acknowledge these instances and gently remind yourself that it's okay to be wrong, to be vulnerable. Embrace humility and open-mindedness. These are not signs of weakness but of strength and growth. Remember, it's not about eradicating your ego, it's about taming it. It's about creating a balance between standing firm in your truths and being open to the truths of others. It's about respecting and honoring your worth without letting it cloud your judgment or hinder your happiness. It's about finding a balance where we can be true to ourselves without letting our ego dictate our happiness. Now it's your turn. Reflect on the role your ego plays in your life. Is it a guard or a gatekeeper? Share your thoughts and join our community. Together embark on a journey of self-improvement and discovery. Subscribe to Inspire Spirit with Letty for more insights into personal growth and finding true happiness.